recorded this video, gosh, over three months ago at this point, and a lot of stuff has happened <laughs> in that time frame. I felt the need to record a little sort of prologue intro before the series just because some time has passed and there were some things I didn't get to talk about in the video and I sort of wanted to just preface it. So before I launch into this whole sort of mini-series on Joe Rowling, I feel like I'm constantly putting disclaimers <laughs> over anything that I talk about on this subject. And, uh, and you'll hear me talk about in this video how unexpected and upsetting it is to have to do that, but this is a video that I have wanted to record for a while because I've spent a couple decades of my life being very passionate about Harry Potter. I wrestled for a while actually with how I wanted to share this because it really matters to me and, and I know that it's something that matters to other people but I also know that it's a really sensitive subject so I want to be as respectful to all of that as I can be. A couple of brass tacks semantics first. I recorded this the day that the new Fantastic Beast movie, The Secrets of Dumbledore, I had to think for a second what the title was. That tells you how how much I have distanced myself from all things Harry Potter over the past couple years, which would be a shocker to a lot of people who grew up with me. Um, I recorded it on the day that that movie was released, because at that point, at the very least, I knew that I was not going to see it like opening day. I, I might wait to see it um, once it had been out for a little bit, or I might not see it at all in theaters and wait for it to come on like DVD or onto a streaming platform or something. I think some people may be watching this series as sort of a, like a, see if they can guess whether or not I'm gonna go wind up seeing the movie or not. So part of me doesn't want to spoil that for you by telling you right now what the answer to that question is. But let's just say it has not been an easy decision and it's still an ongoing process how to how to navigate all of this. Normally when I record my videos, they're somewhere between like 30 and 40 something minutes. This one, when I recorded it, was an hour and 15 minutes. Even though I do have long form content on here, none of it is that long. This is a video that I really want people to see. I want it to be digestible to a, to a broader crowd. I decided to break it up into segments and release it as a playlist. I've created pieces <laughs> so that you can kind of consume it at, at the pace that works for you. I think this is a good compromise. Anyone who wants to consume the entire video as a whole can just kind of watch all of the, watch the entire playlist. Or if people don't have the time to do that, they can just kind of watch it in, in pieces. And if this goes well. If people like this, then I'll try to do something similar for my other videos as I as I put more things on here. I was sort of kicking myself that I didn't think about this in time to have recorded it and be able to have it polished before the new Fantastic Beast movie came out, because that would have been the ideal time to put this out. Then people who were making a decision whether or not they wanted to see the movie, they could take my insight into account as, as they're making that decision. But of course, I recorded it on the day of the release of the movie. I thought about putting it out during Pride Month, but then I didn't want to tarnish Pride Month with bringing up Harry Potter, which is something that's very sensitive to a lot of people who are celebrating Pride. So I wanted Pride Month to be more of a, a sort of joyful time to talk about happy things. And so then I was like, okay, so if we're not doing it during Pride, then we're doing it in July. And I was like, well, as, as a Harry Potter fan for all of these years, I know that July 31st is a very significant day. It's Harry Potter's birthday because it's Joe Rowling's birthday. So this felt like the right time. This felt like a time that Harry Potter was going to be back in the zeitgeist on everybody's social media feeds and, and people be thinking about Harry Potter and maybe wanting to engage with this conversation. So here we are, <laughs> July 31st. And as I was thinking about breaking it up into segments, I was like, I'm going to break it up into chapters. And when I got to that moment in my brain, I was like, chapters, that's perfect for Harry Potter because it's a book. You know, over the past three or so months as I've been editing and polishing, I've gotten to nerd out a little bit about Harry Potter and, and add some things into this series that that I know other Harry Potter fans will, will appreciate. I've got some, some music in here and I've I've used quotes from the series as a way of almost like ironically showing 
that that Joe Rowling is not, you know, <laughs> she's not walking the walk. Initially, when I began to polish this video, there was one quote that stuck out to me as the quote that I would like open the video with. It's the quote that I used in my initial Facebook post a couple of years back when all this was first going on, because it's one of my favorite quotes from the series as a, as a writer. It's one that really resonates with me, and that is, words are, in my not so humble opinion, our most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. And that is a Dumbledore quote, and you will see it in this series. But I just think that that is very accurate in general, but especially in this particular scenario. And Joe Rowling is using her words and her skill at writing to promote an anti-trans agenda. And it's hurting a lot of people and it's alienating a lot of people. I hope that my words and, and my working through it in this series helps other people to, to feel seen for the way that maybe they've been grappling with similar things, but also to, to know that they're not alone, that just because Joe Rowling doesn't respect them as people, it doesn't mean that everybody associated with that series and who is a fan of that series thinks about you the same way. And I hope that that's one of the messages that you take away from the series is that you are valid, you are loved, and you matter. And I'll say that a few times a few different ways throughout the series, so hopefully that will, that will come across. I think the main reason that I created this video is education, to provide insight. There are people who don't understand why people are mad at Joe Rowling. They know that something is wrong. They know that Joe Rowling did something, but they're not quite aware of the impact that it's had or the specifics of what happened. And people who are going to see Fantastic Beasts and then seeing other people boycotting it are just kind of like, why is that happening? I feel like there are some people out there who, when they choose to protest something, they just kind of yell, whether that's online or in person, because they're so riled up and often for justified reasons, but it's hard to get your point across and it's hard to affect change if you're not willing to kind of have a dialogue about it and be open and maybe a little bit vulnerable to talk about what it is that is making you so upset. And so I think what I wanted to do with this series was sort of lay out like, this is where I'm coming from. As a lifelong Harry Potter fan, who is also very, very supportive of the trans community and their right to exist, and who myself has recently, you know, become more aware and open about my own journey with gender, identity, expression, presentation, all that stuff. It's something very, very near and dear to my heart, as is Harry Potter. And so it's, as you can imagine, it's been a very difficult time to just be processing everything, especially in the middle of a pandemic still, with everything else going on in the world. So without further ado, <laughs> enjoy the series.